Well, it seems like just every day we report on acts of senseless violence, not only here in Northern California, but also across the U.S. And it seems like crime is at an all-time high. But the question is, is it? In tonight's Project Community, Saving Our Cities, Jason Marks looks into the numbers that might surprise you. The experts will tell you there's no magic wand to make crime go away. Probably not. No. It's more complicated than that. If I knew it, I'd, I'd, you know, be famous making lots of money. The University of the Pacific teacher Jennifer Medell isn't famous and she's not rich. Researchers have been trying to figure that out for a long time. But she is really, really smart and one of those who's determined to find an answer. And if we think about different theories of why crime occurs, that might give some solutions or potential insight on how we respond to crime. Looking at trends, but again, same information is crucial for anyone who's into criminal justice. When it gives us a broader picture of what crime looks like in the United States. Medell says in reality, crime is actually down. And we see, of course, that we had kind of our great crime peak um, in the 90s and that crime has been declining pretty, pretty steadily since then. Crime was at an all-time high in 1991. Nationwide, we saw 10 homicides per 100,000 people, or 24,703 victims. In 2020, that number stood at 6.5 homicides per 100,000 people, 21,570 victims. Though the final numbers aren't in for 2021, it appears the rate has continued to rise, but Medell isn't sure it will continue. There is pretty good suggestion that this is going to be a blimp rather than a continued um, trend. So for starters, what made crime drop so significantly since 91? There's there's a number of factors that come into play um, that's hard to point to any one single thing. Though she points to lower crack cocaine use, changes in law enforcement policing, and better economic conditions. There's even a theory that reducing lead paint has helped because of the negative impact it caused on brain development. But while crime is going down, fear of crime in the U.S. is actually going up. And because we all have access to around the clock news coverage and social media in the palm of our hands, it might seem like things are worse than ever. The idea that, you know, if it bleeds, it leads um, a aggravated assault is going to be much more interesting to cover than a simple assault, even though simple assault is statistically much more common than aggravated assault. So there's um, kind of a skewed perception of how rampant crime might be. But even though numbers are half of what they once were, there's still far too many people who are senselessly losing their lives. Just because crime is down doesn't mean that people are going to be satisfied with that. So you, you might argue that, you know, any crime is too much crime. For Project Community, Saving Our Cities, Jason Marks, KCRA 3 News. And as we've been reporting, people all over the area are working to try to cut down on crime and senseless violence in their areas. If you want to check out the crime rates over the past 30 years for yourself, we've put that link on our KCRA3 app.